This topic is called solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable, fractional forms with monomial numerators. So it's a very long title. Um, we're still solving for a variable. They say there's several occurrences. So there's going to be multiple terms with the variable in it. There's going to be fractions. So there's, there's denominators in the equation, which we're going to get rid of first thing. And a monomial numerator just means there's one term in the numerator of the fraction. So um, PS, please subscribe to my channel and like any videos that are helpful to you. So in this problem here, let's rewrite it. We wanna look at the denominators. We have a three and a two. We wanna get the least common multiple of three and two. In other words, the least common denominator, and that's gonna be six. PS, the least common multiple is a number that both those denominators will go into evenly and we try to get the smallest one that they go into. Because six is the least um, common multiple of three and two, we're gonna multiply the entire equation by six. So it's important to remember to multiply six by each term in the equation. We're multiplying everything by six. We're not changing the equation except that it looks a little bit better and it makes it a little bit easier to solve. So we're gonna divide six by three first and do two times x. 6 times 3 is 18, and then we're going to divide 6 by 2 to get 3, so we have 3x. Now, what I like to do is I like to look at the coefficients of x. That's the number that's in front of x. Find the one that is the greatest. So between 2x and 3x, 3x is greater, so I want all my x's to go on that side where the 3x is. So I'm going to subtract 2x from the left. So you have to subtract that entire um, variable term in order to move it from one side to the other or to get rid of it on one side. So we have left a negative 18, and 3x minus 2x is x, so we're done. Our answer is negative 18. That worked out really well. Doesn't always work out that way. Okay, so let's do another example. So now we have y's, like on every single fraction, that's gonna be pretty cool. So we have denominators two, four, and eight. The least common multiple of all of those numbers is eight. They all go into eight evenly. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by eight. First, we divide by the denominator. Two goes into eight four times. So we have four y. Four goes into eight two times. And then we have to multiply that by the three. So we have six y. And eight divided by eight is one. And that's going to equal y. That's a, uh -oh, uh oh, I put an x in there, but it's just y. That's what it means by, um, well, it's a occurrences of the variable. So there's just one variable in here. Now we combine like terms and we have um, 4y plus 6y is 10y. And 10 times y equals y. That doesn't sound very good, but that's okay. We can get all our y's on one side. 10y is greater than y, so let's subtract y. This is gonna be like feel kind of weird for some of you, that's okay. 10y take away y is 9y, and y minus y is 0. The only number that can multiply by 9 to get 0 is 0. If we divide both sides by 9, 0 divided by anything is just 0. So y has to be 0 in order to make this equation true. And we'll do one more just for kicks and giggles and to kind of have another chance to do some practice. So we have 4 and 10. So we're looking for the least common multiple of 4 and 10 to multiply the entire equation by. So 20 is the smallest number that they both can go into. If you picked 40, that's okay. You just will have a little bit of simplifying to do at the end. Not a big deal. So we divide um, 20 by 4 and get 5. 5 times y is 5y. Divide 20 by 10 and we get 2. Times that by y, we get 2y. Um, divide 20 by 4 and get 5. And 5 times seven is five times seven, 35. We combine like terms um, and they're both on the same side. So five y plus two more y is seven y. We divide by seven so that we can see what number times seven gives me 35 and that will be five. So y will be equal to five. And you can always plug it back in into your equation to check your answer to see if it works. And that's the end of the lesson.